G'day folks, it's Rob here, and in today's clip we'll have a bit of a gander at how the Cracky hydroponic systems are going. So to begin with, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a catch up on what's going on with the different tubs and bits and pieces, and then we'll answer a couple of questions that I've been asked over on YouTube. Uh, to begin with, um, I harvested all the pak choy, you folks had seen all that. Uh, so I needed to get some more seedlings and I wanted to start my own. So I've uh, got a couple of little seedling trays here. Uh, pak choy was started a couple of weeks ago, a little bit slow out of the gate, and two different types of lettuce that um, we've saved seeds from. So the way these guys were sown it is pretty basic. I popped some moist perlite in a tray and then basically sprinkled the seeds over the top and then a layer of uh, the perlite over the top of that again. And as you can see, the, um, the pak choy here are just starting to get their first set of uh, true leaves uh, form on them. So these guys will be going into one of these tubs in a little while, not today, but in a couple of days, I'll uh, fill you in on what's going on with that in a tick. Um, these guys here, these lettuce, we've got two different types, obviously two different germination rates as well. These guys here, I think, are the rabbit ear lettuce, which is a cos or a romaine style lettuce uh, with a long leaf. And these guys here are some coral lettuce uh, that we saved from seeds a number of years ago now. So definitely uh, not the best strike rate with these guys. About the same amount of seeds went in. Uh, so these guys here will be grown in our system or one of these little tubs, hopefully, and also over at mum's place in her new aquaponics system. And we'll try and um, spread these guys out around the place as well. Um, definitely thinking about setting up a couple more of these totes if I can remember where I found them. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's this is basically uh, the next lot of um, plants that are going in. Now, with these plants, um, I think I could pop another two in here, drill two more holes in the center here, especially with the pak choy, and get two more um, plants out of one of these totes. The reason being is after both of them were emptied, I had round about four to five liters of uh, nutrient left in there. So I figured there's enough there to um, feed at least two more plants before the um, whole cycle's finished. That's basically from seedling all the way through to harvest because with these guys here, the idea is to fill them up once, let them use all the nutrients, harvest them, and away we go. Uh, run a little bit differently to these guys here, which we'll chat about in a tick, uh, which are a top-up system. So uh, I am thinking, yeah, a couple more holes in here, which means we'll, we'll pretty much we'll get eight out of every tote. Now, definitely doing pak choy in one. In fact, I'll probably do pak choy in both of them, and like I mentioned, set up another tote with some lettuce in them. Now in this tote here, we're having a couple of issues, namely uh, the, <laughs> the green onions, they obviously don't look very well. Uh, that's because only one of them managed to get the roots down into the nutrient before it started to be used up by the plants. So what we're going to do with these guys is pop them downstairs in a root pouch or veggie pod and let them live out, uh, live out their life down there. Hopefully they'll bounce back all right. And in their place, I'm going to put another cutting, uh, probably a uh, sweet basil at this point in time, a nice and long one so its roots can reach all the way down because obviously the water um, isn't up near the top anymore and as you can see yeah those those roots on those green onions don't make um, make it down all the way to the base these um systems were actually topped up today i topped up this tote here and also the capsicum or the sweet pepper and the cucumber as well down there so um with when you do top them up uh, just a bit of a point um, you never fill them all the way up and that is because you can't really see it on these guys here but you can see it better on the um, capsicum um, they get a lot of fine air absorbing roots that sprout around the top if i was to fill these containers all the way up to the top i'd effectively be drowning the plants so definitely not something you want to do uh, this plant here this is the thai mint i'm not exactly sure if that's <laughs> what it is um, chatted to paul from life in thailand g'day paul and then he wasn't aware of it um, being called Thai mint over in Thailand he said but there's a number of mints over there so thanks for the help mate these ones here as you can see are starting to get a bit of a crinkly leaf and I didn't think much of it the other day but you can probably make out all these little white specks down there they're the shells of sap sucking insects as to what type I can't tell because I've pulled leaves off and I've had a look and I've had a bit of a dig around underneath and I was expecting to see either um, some white fly or aphids but i'm seeing neither um, so i'm not too sure what's going on i haven't seen any ants on here farming aphids but i also can't find any live pest at all and i have noticed the newer growth is coming out a lot cleaner it's not coming out wrinkled like this 
So I'm sort of wondering that I may have had an infestation and it's um, died off for whatever reason. Just thought I'd add this into the clip at the end here. I've seen a load of these hoverflies land on the time in. And I'm starting to wonder whether they're, or their larvae more to the point, uh, the reason why we have a lot of dead insects on there uh, and no live ones. So always good to see a couple of natural predators at work. Uh, what I am going to do is um, give these guys a little bit of a spray with some um, horticultural oil I have and hopefully that'll knock these guys on the head if there are any left. As for harvesting, uh, these guys here, the greens, they've been harvested a little bit, a little bit here and there. I did take a fair bit of the Thai mint, the sweet basil and the basil mint from down there off the other day and what we didn't use straight away in the salad has just been sitting in a glass on the windowsill and we're just picking off bits and pieces here and there. The uh, capsicum or sweet pepper, she's go going rather well. We've got a number of uh, fruit in there and I had a good look around and I couldn't see any aphids or any other pests in here. And we do have, let me spin her around, we do have one nice little fruit forming just in there. Trying to get this phone to focus. We do have one nice little fruit forming in there and we've got a few more on. Uh, just a bit of a hint with these guys, they're self-fertile. They have a perfect flower, meaning male and female organs in one flower. So you can just give them a bit of a tap, same with tomatoes and eggplants. Give them a bit of a tap or a bit of a shake, which the wind does here, and that moves the pollen around so you can end up with some fruit forming. Um, so yeah, pretty impressed with the way this is going. Um, I did post a clip the other day about our new membership website. There'll be a link in the description if you're interested. And I did notice in the background that she was uh, waving around a fair bit in the wind. So one thing I have done is I've come through and I've just zapped in a couple of screws on either side. There's one down there and one on the other side. And that's just keeping the, um, the net cup in there nice and firm. Doesn't mean I can't take it out, but yeah, I can um, check on water levels through this little, um, this little opening here. And I can take the whole lid off if I want, just to see how things are going on down in there. Yeah, so just one thing to keep in mind, if the, the plants do get a little bit big, and starts to get a bit blustery, they can yeah, fall over if the net cup's not secured. Uh, down here we have the cucumber. Now this cucumber, for some reason I thought it was uh, self-fertile, um, meaning basically that um, it only throws uh, fertile fruit, but I was incorrect. Um, hello Lizzie, you coming over to say g'day? Um, yeah, so I was incorrect and a lot of the, um, the fruit that came after this one, I'll play in a minute. So yeah, what I've been doing is grabbing the, um, the, uh, an earbud and just dabbing it in the female flower, uh, sorry, the male flower, and then moving the pollen over to the female flower. So hopefully this one will take, and in a week or so we'll end up with another cucumber. Uh, this one here is, does have a few issues with algae on the root, so I can open her up. She does have a bit of an issue with algae on the root, so I'm actually thinking about um, winding, winding her up and getting a, pro a proper um, self-fertile cucumber in here. Uh, just so we don't have to worry about fertilizing the fruit and also got some spray paint that I'm going to use to um, just cover the totes just to make them 100% UV proof so we don't get that algae issue. Uh, just down here we have the basil mint, she's going really well and we have a couple of the uh, bull's horn capsicums that are taking a little while to get established. Uh, so yeah, they've been in there for about three or four days now and hang on, we'll just throw the crab. There you go Lizzie. <laughs> Um, oh, you're right. Um, yeah, these guys have been in there for a couple of days. So um, yeah, I'd say in about a week or two's time, we'll, we'll see them may put on some decent growth. So next catch up, you'll see a bit of growth on them. Um, but yeah, the auto pot, pretty happy with the way it's going. I actually had uh, the brother of um, the auto pot guy um, get in contact with me and let me know that there is a little um, cover you can get from the top of the perlite to stop it from getting algae. Uh, just to show you down in here, it was getting a little bit of algae. Um, I just topped it up obviously with some new perlite when I put the new capsicum in, the new bull's horn in. Um, so there is something you can get to um, stop the algae from growing on the top there. Uh, someone else uh, suggested that I use this for the aquaponics. That's the main reason I got it. Uh, mainly because I'm not going to be doing um, this forever. The hydroponics up here on the veranda, Bianca would like it back or well, this end of it and her table. Um, so this is just a little bit of a stopgap measure until we get the aquaponics and some other veggie bed sorted out down the back. And then this little auto pot will be hooked up to the aquaponic system. And yeah, we might try a few more. We'll just wait and see how we go. Um, you happy now? You're gonna chew in on your crab. Um, 
Another question I've got is about using the leftover nutrients. Uh, like I mentioned, these tubs here, they gave us about four to five liters of leftover nutrient. Uh, this brand here, no, I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything, but Agricultural Organics are the mob I chose to use, mainly because all their nutrients are plant and fungi derived where they can, and then whatever that can't be derived from plant and fungi, they, you know, just like plants, mine it from the soil itself and add it into these nutrients. So whatever's left over from here, I've got about eight liters left over from these two. It just went out onto uh, different root pouches out the back and I'm not worried about, you know, harsh chemicals because basically plants will only take up natural elements. So there's no harsh chemicals in there and it's all pretty much all plant or fungi derived, well, as much of it as they can. So that's why I chose this product in particular. Also too, while we're just talking about these nutrients, I have had a, a couple of people suggest that I only need one of these for vegetative growth and then the other one part b for fruits and flowers uh, these guys aren't set up like that um, this here this mix here is a both grow so have, they have an a and a b for the grow and then in other mixes they have fruit and flower with this brand here it doesn't it's not always the way with all brands some brands will have just a grow uh, bottle and then they'll have a separate bottle not that one a separate one that's um, just for fruit and flowers so this is just the way that bloom uh, make up their mixes uh, they're also aussie owned and made too so there you go uh, and in saying this you know you don't need to buy this brand you know we'll hide their name you don't need to buy this brand there are far more other mixes out there i mean jeb legend um, he's got um, brands that he recommends and he uses on his clips uh, bobby from mhp gardener um, he's got um, i think he uses general hydroponics oh well that's one name i remember from his clips um, so there are other brands out there i just chose these guys because they're as organic as i could get Something else that has been suggested to me a fair bit is I should um, probably use pool noodles instead of these grow grips. Um, I chose these grow grips because they're UV stabilized, unlike a lot of the pool noodles. I've seen family and friends pool noodles that are break down in the sun. Um, so that's one reason. And the second reason is they're um, being made by Rob, a fellow YouTuber. G'day Rob. And yeah, he's developed these guys for commercial purposes. I jumped in the Kickstarter and got a couple that way. So I decided to use them. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll pretty much will stick with them. I mean, they grip in there nice and tight. Um, I could, if I wanted to, pull this whole thing out, turn it upside down and the plants wouldn't come out. Um, but I'm not, obviously not going to. So I figure I'm going to stick with them. Um, the UV stabilize is a bonus, but also too helping out a uh, fellow aquaponicist. And um, you've probably seen this uh, just um, in the corner of some shots. This is a, little experiment it's something i've done before except in the aquaponics chopped off the bottom of the celery shoved it in the aquaponics and it grew into a rather large beast um, you might be able to see there's some small roots starting to form down there these are one of those crops that you can treat as a cut and come again and uh, just starting to get some new growth through so uh, the plan was um, to replace um, that thing there uh, with this here, but obviously well, I'm not going to get the root growth on it that is required to send it halfway down that tote. So um, this might even go in mum's aquaponics or my own aquaponics down the track once we finish it. So yeah, and you right there. Just sprung someone eating the basil. Because <laughs> I hope it was tasty. So I am happy enough with the cracky that we will be um, adding a couple more totes on as I mentioned earlier. So I might bring you along for that. Uh, let me know if you're interested down in the comments section below. And I'll show you how I'm going to drill out the totes and set them up and the new ones as well, if I can find these little guys again. Also too, just quickly, I launched our uh, Farm Your Own Yard uh, supporters page. So I'm off Patreon, I'm off Subscribestar, I'm on my own little website now, uh, where I'll also be hosting downloads and courses, fingers crossed, in a couple of months time. So um, you can check that out. There'll be a link down in the description and also a link at the end here over to our other website that has all our different ways you can support us. It doesn't have to be monetarily. Um, so yeah, um, suss that out if you're interested in um, supporting the channel in other ways. And a big thumbs up and thank you to all you folks from um, other platforms who have jumped over to the Farm Your Own Yard uh, supporter page. Thank you very much for your support. Um, but yeah, I will pretty much well leave it there. I do hope that you've enjoyed this little bit of a hydro um, update clip and I will catch you folks later. Cheers all, have a top one. Lizzie wants me to play with her crab. That's not gonna happen, sweetie. We'll wait until, oh, very disappointed. We'll wait until after filming. Um, so where were we? We were uh, talking about uh, fertilizing.